All right, here we go. We're gonna start off our lecture on the anatomy of the endocrine system. One main type of question that you'll run into is just asking you to keep track of which glands are part of the endocrine system. And so we're gonna start right there. We have the pituitary gland, we have the thyroid gland, the parathyroid gland, the adrenal gland, the pineal gland, the pancreas, and then the reproductive glands such as the ovaries and the testes. Now let's look at a couple broad and general questions that you'll get about these glands. So first off with the pituitary gland, make sure that you don't confuse that for the pineal gland. And then with the thyroid, a common question that you'll see is that it is the biggest endocrine gland. And so they'll ask you which of the following are the largest endocrine glands and it's gonna be the thyroid. And the way we remember that is we think of the thigh muscle. And so the thigh muscle is a big muscle and that's gonna help us remember that the thyroid gland is a big gland. And then the pineal gland, really the only thing I've ever seen tested on that is that it produces melatonin, which helps you fall asleep. And the way I remember that is I imagine that there's a pin in your heel and you can't sleep. And so if you remove the pin from your heel, then you can fall asleep with the help of melatonin. And then pancreas, big time question that comes up a lot is that it is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland. And so you'll see right here that I wrote, don't pick the parotid gland because that is an exocrine gland. The parotid gland is often used as a distractor. So if they're asking about endocrine glands, don't pick the parotid gland. Next thing you need to know is what controls it and where the control system is located. So as far as what controls the endocrine system, two main organs in the brain, the hypothalamus, and the pituitary gland, which can be divided into an anterior and a posterior part. So that is sometimes called the hypothalamus pituitary complex, and that is the command center of the endocrine system. So if we want to control the largest gland in the endocrine system, which is the thyroid, then we're gonna in some way involve the hypothalamus pituitary complex. Now, as far as the location, you have to be kind of careful here because generally it's just found in the diencephalon. But if you zoom in a little bit and we focus just on the hypothalamus, then that is part of the limbic system. And so you can see either one of those locations tested on. Now, instead of seeing hypothalamus pituitary complex, sometimes you'll see the word neuroendocrine system or neuroendocrine complex. And so the neuro is referencing that the hypothalamus is in the brain, and then the endocrine is referencing both the pituitary gland, which is part of the endocrine system, but also the fact that the brain controls the endocrine system. So if you get a question asking about where is the control center of the endocrine system, you have to be aware of words like diencephalon, hypothalamus, pituitary complex, the hypothalamus, which is part of the limbic system, uh, the pituitary gland, or neuroendocrine systems. On this slide, we're going to look at the differences between the endocrine system and the nervous system. The timed response of the endocrine system can be fast or slow, but in the nervous system, it's always fast. The signaling method for the endocrine system is chemical, and in the nervous system, it can be chemical or electrical. And then the main chemical messenger that we see in the endocrine system is hormones. And then for the nervous system, it's gonna be neurotransmitters. And then distance traveled for the endocrine system can be long or short. And then for the nervous system, it's always really short. Remember that synapse is just a very small distance. In this slide, we're gonna be focusing on glands. So both the endocrine and the exocrine both have glands and glands secrete hormones. And so the way we categorize whether a gland is an endocrine or an exocrine gland is based upon whether it has a duct or no duct. And endocrine glands are going to be ductless and they release stuff inside the body. And these are the glands that we just mentioned earlier, like the thyroid and the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. And then exocrine glands, such as the parotid gland, they do have ducts and they release stuff outside the body, such as saliva, sweat, sebum. And so the way we're gonna remember that is we're gonna think exocrine products exit the body through ducts. And then just a reminder that the pancreas is both an endocrine and an exocrine gland. And so it delivers its chemicals both through ducts and also without ducts. Now I've seen this really weird question 
come up a couple times about this dog that has part of a parotid gland and part of a pancreas implanted into it and how some functions will continue to work and some will not work. And sometimes they'll ask which gland will continue functioning after getting implanted the parotid or the pancreas. And so if you cut a parotid gland out of another animal, you're going to be severing a duct. And so the gland will no longer work. But if you implant an endocrine gland, which is ductless, then you're not cutting a duct. And so if you put an endocrine gland into this dog, it will continue to work afterwards. And so when you cut a pancreas out of another animal and then re-implant it into a dog, endocrine function will continue to work but the exocrine function will not. So we're gonna briefly discuss signaling here. So endocrine signaling, remember, is ductless and inside the body. Exocrine signaling is gonna involve ducts and it's gonna exit the body. And then just a quick reminder that autocrine signaling is when your signaling is gonna affect your own cell. And that prefix auto means self. And then paracrine is when secretions are gonna affect a nearby cell. And we're gonna remember a pair of cells next to each other. Now in the next slide, we're gonna look right here at some specialized types of exocrine signaling that sometimes will come up on the exam. First one we're gonna focus on is marocrine. And so marocrine is when the signals are secreted through exocytosis. And that's the key word, exocytosis. And sometimes you'll also see it worded as secretory vesicle, which is exocytosis. When we have chemicals exiting the body, Outside of the body through exocytosis, it's called marocrine signaling. And the way I remember that is I think of these little chimeros in the exocytosis vesicles and they're just getting secreted out. And then a specialized type of marocrine signaling is eccrine signaling. And that's when the signaling involves sweat glands. And so I look at eccrine and I think ech for sweat. So we're going to think sweaty glands, ech for eccrine signaling. Next is apocrine. And this is when we have just a small portion of the cell actually pinch off, and that is the secretion. And the way we're going to remember that is we're going to think of the APO as apostasy. So a part of this cell breaks off from the main group and goes off and does its own thing. Next, we have holocrine signaling. And so the whole cell explodes and bursts and releases all of its signals. And when I look at holo, it kind of look, sounds like whole to me. That's the way I remember that one. Holo, the whole cell dies. That's the end of this one. We'll go right on into part two.